All right, I'm going to talk to you about three reasons why I will never, emphasis on never, have a church building. Never for any reason, ever. I'm going to give you three reasons today, and I'm going to back it up with the King James Bible. Okay? I'm going to give you the three reasons, and we're going to go through the scriptures. Number one, they are condemned in scripture. You say, well, they're not openly. They're condemned in scripture. Okay? Church buildings, condemned in scripture. Give you the proof. Number two, people would worship me in the church building rather than Jesus Christ. I'm, again, I'm going to give you the scriptures to line up with this whole thing. Number three, it is impossible to legally have a church building, both spiritually and temporally. They give you, I'll trigger the Catholics with that one. The spiritual temporal thing within the Catholic Church. You can't legally have a church building. All right. I'm going to give you some really shocking facts on that one. All right. But let's start out here. Acts chapter 7. Where does the Bible condemn church buildings? Acts chapter 7. I've been ripping on church buildings for so many years now. I'm just shocked that anybody still can claim to be saved and, you know, you know, maybe you're just so out of the loop that you don't you haven't heard any arguments against your church building thing, but you know, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's been debated back and forth with, with uh, you know, people that are saved and, and those that are lost, you know, traditionalists over here. Um, there are no arguments anymore, okay? But we're going to go over why I personally am never going to have a church building. Acts chapter 7, verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? So that's talking about the Old Testament. Yes, it is. If you look at verse 47, but Solomon built him in house. Okay? But you see the whole thing is in the Old Testament, God told them to build that sanctuary, that uh, tabernacle in the wilderness, so to speak. He told them to build that. All right? And yet he said, I'm done with that. I'm done with that whole system. Right there, you read it. So then why on earth would you build a building and call it the house of God? This is the church that we go to. They say, well, we understand that the church is the people. You know, here is the church and here is the, 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 the steeple. Open it up and there's the people. Well, you know, the little thing I learned when I was a boy in Sunday school, brainwashing. Um, we know it's the church is the people. Um, that is one of the biggest lies that's out there, which again, church building, will cling, church building people will cling to that. They'll say... Um, we know it's not the building. The building is just brick and, you know, wood and whatever else. We understand that. It's the people inside. Oh, really? Um, what happens if that church building gets robbed? People will stand around and say, imagine that. Who would rob a church? Happened to me growing up. The church that I went to, was broken into. They stole a VCR and a bunch of other things from one of the Sunday school rooms, and people were just in shock. They robbed the church. Oh, what I, th I thought it was the people, not the building. All these people, you know, they, they burned this uh, wicked devil building down there in Washington, D.C., the rioters and whatever else. That's one thing I agree with. And, you know, they, I'm not advocating violence, you understand, but, uh, you know, Church buildings aren't, you know, holy or anything else. They're just satanic, you know, hell centers. And they burned this thing and people just, oh, they actually burned a church. Oh, like it's some kind of a sacrilege. You know, you defiled the holy temple, you know. And what happened to Stephen here, by the way, in Acts chapter 7, when he spoke against the, the church? What happened? Um, they, uh, they talked about... Uh, he spoke against this holy place, you know. They considered uh, their building to be holy. Mm -hmm. Hey, stop running in church. Don't you know you're in the house of God? How can you run in the people? Every single Baptist out there, especially, they're some of the biggest temple idolaters out there. Don't even talk to me about it. I mean, I was raised in church buildings. I heard all the stuff. I saw all the things. I was one of those people for a while. You know, oh, it's good to be in church. And all this pulpit and 
oh, it's just a sacred aura of this place here. Yeah, you worship the building. That violates scripture. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. God's not there. We got to go to church to meet God. Really? No, you don't. What is the place of my rest? What house will you build me? You know, some pagan building, you know, and again, you get the, you get the, uh, the phallic obelisk on top there. And in the front, what do you have? Like this. And it goes down like that in so many different ones. And you have, what do you have there? The big, big columns like that. Greco-Roman. They got the little filials and stuff up top here. And then they have the grooves, you know, in them, and then the little thing down there and whatever else. Yeah. A temple, uh, an Athenian temple, if I remember correctly. You know, from my independent fundamental Baptist Catholicism studies. But you got the Greek Parthenon in the front, and then on the top you have the obelisk. Church after church after church looks like that. Well, well, ours doesn't. Ours doesn't have a steeple, and it doesn't have the Greek look in the front and whatever. But you still consider it to be holy. It's still some special building that if something happened to it, you would probably weep and wail and gnash your teeth and, and pull your hair out and whatever else. And, oh, what happened to our church? Uh. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 17, verses 24 through 25. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Don't tell me that these buildings like this, don't tell me that they're not somehow people doing that thing out of worship. You know? If you love the Lord, won't you give uh, your special tithes and offering to keep this great ministry going? You do care about the work of the Lord, don't you? Got to keep that temple looking good. You know, I mean, we need new carpet in here. What are lost people going to think if they come in here and they see holes in our carpet? You know, we need to get some new pews. I mean, this, this is atrocious. I mean, they're scratched and everything else. We got to do something. And, you know, we could go out soul winning this Saturday, but we got to fix up the church. We got to get the, you know, the nice little, you know, bushes around here and things. And, and you know, got to get some, some plants and flowers around there. And, and we got to get some nice landscaping done here. And, and you know, we got we to have some nice looking, you know, thing. I thought you said it's the people. It's not the people. And you know it. You know I'm telling you the truth. Okay? Give you a real good one here. Acts chapter 19, verse 35 through 37. Acts chapter 19, verse 35. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana? And of the image which fell down from Jupiter, seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wait a second. Neither robbers of churches? Did you know that that's the only time in the entire New Testament that churches is referred to as a building? And it's a lost man talking about a pagan temple? Did you know that pagans call their temples churches? You say, well, that's ridiculous. This is absurd. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. Okay, let me ask you a real good question, which no church building person ever likes to answer. Yeah, every time you answer this, they just, just well, and they change the subject as quick as they can. You want to nail a church building person? Here's the simple question. Okay, church buildings. Who used them more down through the centuries, God or the devil? The church building in your, the different churches in your town, in your city, wherever, near to where you live, are they filled with saved people or lost? Predominantly. Lost. Okay? Again, this is science. All right? 
The people in those church buildings, they don't follow this book. Which lead me, leads me to my next point, why these church buildings are wrong. Let me get rid of the flower. It just kind of irritates me there. <laughs> I don't want something lovely beside one of these devil buildings. You know, I like flowers. They're beautiful. But uh, we'll just leave it like that. Um, but here's the thing. Do you believe that this book is finished in Revelation chapter 22? Is that where it ends? Or can we add more things to it? Um, you see, if God wanted church buildings, they'd be in this book. Build a temple to me and invite lost people to it so that they can get saved. It'd be there, but it's not there. Um, who is it that adds to the Scriptures? Oh, that'd be Satan. So, um, is this in the Bible or is it added centuries later? Uh, it's added along with catechisms and, and church confessions and, and uh, a lot of the other traditions of men, the Sunday best and the altar calls and the 10% tithe. Added. But it's okay. There are some things that are added that are okay and some things that you know we shouldn't add and whatever else. You're a stinking hypocrite is what you are. There are no church buildings in the Scriptures. If God wanted them, He would put it in the book. Just as plain and simple as that. And you say, well, what about Internet ministry? What about this? What about that? Okay, Internet ministry is not some kind of a sacred thing that I hold up as a sacred cow in my life like people that do with their uh, church buildings. All right? I do this because it's a good way to get to people. But it's not going to mean that I don't do things locally or whatever else or witness to people and, and whatever like that. <clears throat> the church build or the uh, internet ministry stuff, I can take it or leave it. I get kicked off YouTube. Oh, okay, I'll go do something else. Simple. But what happens if your church building gets taken away? For all you pagans out there. What happens if uh, the government would come along and say, we're going to burn every church building down? Just say that there's World War III. At the end of World War III, China takes over America. And they come in and they say, every church building is going to get burned to the ground. Every single one of them. We're outlawing religion. What would you do? Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. <laughs> you can't do that to our church. Oh, I have a lot of memories at that church. And, uh... It's the building. See? And your warped mind. Reason number two that I will never have a church building. People would worship me and not Jesus Christ. Let's look at some scriptures. Acts chapter 5. And again, you know, some of, the, some of the people out there that know everything about me, about my private life and everything, because they've seen a few of my videos on YouTube and I step on their toes spiritually and somehow they're magically able to understand me better than I know myself. Um, some of these rather slow people um, they don't understand the fact that uh, I have been to church buildings and I have preached in the pulpits and I have had people worship me and whatever else and I detest it. Oh, Denninger has his cult following. I don't have a cult following. If people are like that with me, it's not because I encourage them to do so. And uh, again, if I wanted that, I could go to some church building someplace. I know how to control people like that. I could put on the act and whatever else and get my little Sunday best and all that. I can do that stuff. And I reject it. That's why I'm here. That's why I do this. That's why I reject that because I don't want people following me. <sighs> Some people you can't convince either anyway, so whatever. It doesn't matter. Acts chapter 5, verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Okay? Another challenge to the church building people out there. Can you please name me one church building that was great back in the glory days of J. Frank Norris or Peter Ruckman or, uh, you know, um, Charlie Fuller or, uh, you know, some of these other guys. Can you please name me one church building, D.L. Moody, um, that's still good today. After the guy dies. I don't know of one. Not one. Why? Well, because the people were there to worship the man. 
That's why it was a worker or council that was of men, and it came to naught. Okay? And the fact of the matter is, all church buildings die with their founder. Simple. Now, J. Frank Norris was the, the biggest uh, Baptist preacher in America in his day, back in the early 1900s. And now one of his churches in Detroit is just overrun with rats. It's just abandoned and whatever. The other one down in Fort Worth, I think it is, um, is run by charismatics now. Came to naught. Biggest Baptist preacher of his day. What about Jack Hiles? First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana. Yeah, look at it now. Look at the condition it's in. Just man, a different man after a different man after a different man just running the thing into the ground. That's what it is. Why? Because it's not of God. And if I got a church building someplace and everybody came and worshipped me and whatever else and put us up on a past pedestal and pastor appreciation day and the whole thing and whatever and we just have a nice little, art, you know, our favorite little circle of pastor's favorites that get the pulpit mentions every Sunday and, the, you know, the whole thing just makes you want to vomit when, you, when you've been through the system. All that stuff, it would come to naught. Something happens to me, it's going to fall apart. They always do, every single time. I mean, you know, where's Paul's church that he founded? <laughs> Greatest Christian ever lived. I mean, you, wouldn't you think that he'd have some kind of thing there, some, you know, building someplace over in Antioch or something like that that's still there, still going strong, still preaching the word, you know? Not there. Hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three, I'll show it to you again here. First Corinthians chapter three, verses four through nine. For while one for, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? I am of Luther, I am of Wesley, I am of Menno, Menno Simon, Menno Knight, in other words, I am of um, Jacob Amon, Amish, you know, I am of uh, Calvin, I'm a Calvinistic, you know, reformed, you know. You see? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Church of the living God. That's all the, you really should be calling yourself. Verse 7, So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Not that. Okay? But when you get this, you see, you can really control people with these things. The greatest mind control centers on earth are these things right here. I can tell you that right now. So what about the universities? They pale in comparison to this. Organized religion can control people. Um, I knew a, a Catholic the one point in time. I don't think he ever came out of Catholicism, but that's another story. And uh, he was actually in the choir that sang at St. Peter's Basilica for one of the high masses at Easter. Literally had been so good with his choir growing up Catholic that he was actually there singing in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. And he said it was just powerful beyond imagination. The acoustics of that place where there's really high ceilings and everything else. See, they're, they're experts with their uh, pagan temples. They know how to really get that, that sound, those huge big pipe organs. Again, I knew of a Baptist church out in Ohio that they were actually talking about getting one of these big pipe organs. It was half a million dollars. No exaggeration. $500,000 that they were going to spend on a pipe organ. Why? Well, you get into the tonal things and whatever else within music, and you can really make people feel the music in their soul. It's, it's, these things are mind control centers on whole different levels. Not to mention the fact that the spiritual significance of having a huge obelisk on top of the thing, uh, like a lightning rod for devils getting into the place. But again, you have the thing there of these people, they'll worship the man up there. You know, and and the the power that these places have, and you, so you get the 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 Pope. He controls people. I mean, look at the look at the people out in the crowd when the Pope walks by. They're just 
<laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, some kind of rock star celebrity going by and they're holding their children out. Oh, please just touch my child. Uh, you know, what's going on there? They're worshiping a man. They don't care about Jesus Christ. And so you have the mother of harlots and then you have her daughters. Every church building out there is a daughter of the mother harlot. Every single one of them. I don't care who it is. I don't care how great it was or whatever else. They're all daughters of the harlot. Every single one of them. And you get these guys and they're there. They get a celebrity status. Yeah, even the best. And they know it. Could I get some kind of a following like that? Oh, absolutely. Sure. But you see, I fear God. I'm not worried about being labeled as a kook or a nut or whatever else because I'm here and not there. Not worried about it. Third John. Go to the book of Third John. Show you another good reason to stay away from church buildings and why I will never have one. Never, ever, 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 ever. Should I say it again? Ever. <laughs> Third John. There's only one chapter, but we'll start here in verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will re remember his deeds which he doeth, praying against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he uh, himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. And it's so funny because I've had people use this thing against me because I kick false prophets and I kick heretics off my channel. I, I you know, ban them because they're coming in posting links to heretical videos and they're attacking me personally and whatever. And so I say, sorry, you're, you're blocked from the channel. You're Diotrephes. Uh, well, last time I checked, I don't think YouTube was a church. Okay. Uh, it's not all saved people, in other words. All right. And, and again, going with their mentality, this is a church to these people that call me Diotrephes. It's kind of funny. But let's just go with the what's going on here. Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. How many people out there with these Baptist churches would receive me and to, to speak if I wanted to come there or whatever else? How many of them would even let me come in the doors? They don't. Um, I get labeled as some kind of a cult leader, and yet the people who are calling me that are going to churches where they would keep a whole lot of other people out. Um, you know, when you come in here to this church, please don't speak against Catholicism because we could lose our building. I might lose my license to preach. Uh, we can't conduct a, a wedding ceremony without a state marriage license because I could lose my church. Literally, one of Ruckman's graduates said that out in Iowa, trying to get married by the guy out there. I can't remember what the loser's name was, but, you know, a, a friend on YouTube had told me about his pastor out there in Iowa. And the guy was afraid to marry my wife and I without a state marriage license. We didn't want one. And he said, you know, I could lose my church. Wow. Bold, brave man there. Yeah. Coward. Sissy. <laughs> um, but you see, these guys are the diatrophies. I'm not a diatrophies. I look at things and I say, okay, hey, you're coming in here and you're posting a bunch of heretical stuff. Oh, whatever. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not kicking people off that are saved. I'm kicking a bunch of lost heretics off. <laughs> and again, you know, how can I really control this thing? How can I really say, okay, I'm kicking these people off and they'll never be able to come back in. They still come back in. You know, if I had a building like this, well, I can just post my guards at the doors and whatever else, like a lot of Baptist churches do. And I can say, so-and-so is not allowed to come back in here. We've disfellowshipped. And, you know, this is where you control people. I can't control people on YouTube. I mean, give me a break. I've banned so many people. They come back in there watching my videos. They're reviewing my videos and whatever else. All these people review my videos. They've been banned and blocked and everything, and they still come in. So how does that qualify me as diatrophies? <laughs> you know, forbiddeth them. You know, whatever. I can't forbid them. It's a public forum. I can't, I can't, you know, I can block them, but that doesn't stop them from coming in and just obsessively trolling everything I do. You know? <sighs> And these the people are creepy. They really are. You know, I, I think if some of these people lived locally, I'm glad that they don't. I'm glad we live far away from these weirdos. But I'm, I, if they did, they probably would just follow me around or something. And where is he going to shop? You know, oh, he's tying his shoe now. And, and uh, 
just watching everything I do. Bizarre. Thirdly, okay, here's the big one, okay? It is impossible to legally have a church building. Okay, let's get into this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God is the lawgiver in the universe. All laws originate from God. I don't think anybody would disagree with me on that if you're saved or if you even believe the Bible. All right. Um, Abraham calls God, back in the book of Genesis, he says, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Okay, Jesus Christ is the judge of all the earth. Um, judge, all judgment is given to him. All right. So a judge enacts laws. All laws must go back to God. And I will tell you this right now, you cannot legally, both spiritually and temporally, you cannot legally have a real church like this. Let me show you why. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we'll begin in uh, verse 12 down through verse 15. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Okay, here's where it's important. What is the church of the living God? Saved people, people that are born again, people who have the Spirit of God there that... Uh, we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Okay? But what do you have? Verse 12 and 13 are saved people. Verse, thir verse 14, the natural man receive receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. <clears throat> they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So here's the point. If you have a church building that's open to both saved and lost, you have a situation where you are literally disobeying the scriptures, disobeying the laws of God. All right? People come in on a Sunday morning. Oh, hello. Welcome everybody here this morning. We're going to begin with hymn number 402. Turn in your hymn book to number 402. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Are the lost people singing it? Yes. Say people singing it? Yes. They're both singing. Um, so one group is telling the truth, the other one's lying. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Lost people singing that? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like the people beside me, I'm not really saved, but I'm here to give my tithe so that the pastor can live a nice life. Oh, well, you don't sing it that way. You see what I'm saying? How can you have a building like this that's opened all are welcome? The church with the heart. How can you do that? Saved and lost people coming into this thing. Do you realize you just contradicted the scriptures? Show me scriptures that says that the uh, saved and lost are supposed to worship together. What are the lost worshiping? That's what they're worshiping. Oh, Brother Hiles. Oh, Brother Hiles. He's such a good preacher. That's what they're worshiping. They're not worshiping Jesus Christ. Do you think I want any part of that? No. Do you think somehow I'm illegitimate because I don't have a church building? I'm just over here in my house preaching and teaching the Word of God to the world out there, witnessing to the people in the local area when the Lord opens up a door of opportunity. That somehow is illegitimate, but this that's the real deal. You're crazy. And if you really, really are into that whole thing, you're lost. I'm just going to tell you, if you're a militant defender of the whole church building thing and, and whatever else, you're lost. You're on your way to hell. Okay, just as simple as that. Um, the Holy Spirit of God, the, the, the things that are spiritual, you see, we receive those things. 
They met in their homes. That never changed. They didn't meet in their homes because they didn't have enough money yet to build the church buildings. Oh, that didn't happen. All right, look at, look at church history. Christians have always been the heretics that meet away from organized religion. Organized religion has always put the heretics to death. Hunt them down. Oh, you're not, you're not going to be part of the church? You weren't here on Sunday. Oh, you heretic you. We're going to have to burn you at the stake. That's church history. Look at another scripture here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for so, so the temple of God, the temple of God. See, it's the temple of God, temple of God. It just said temple of God. It, we got you there. Keep reading. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and will walk in and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And you talk about unclean. Phallic symbol on top of a pagan building. You know, sorry to be graphic here. I'm very sorry, but sometimes you just have to be very honest. This is an uncircumcised male member in the ancient pagan world. And that's on top of your building. Oh, but God's for it. God just is he's okay. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father and unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, see, here's the whole thing. When I say you can't legally have a church, um, you know, that just simply means, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, 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 some of the stuff you just get to a point where you say, I don't see how anybody could defend this over here. So you go to this and you just have to say, well, that, 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 that 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18, that, that's, it's about marriage. It's about marriage. That's all it is, just marriage. Um, well, you don't, last time I checked, you didn't get married to uh, them. <laughs> um, kind of weird. But uh, it's not about marriage. It's about you worshiping the Lord. In spirit and in truth. You worship the Lord in your home. You have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you go and you meet with other brethren and things. And you can meet in public and you can meet wherever you want to meet. But you stay away from these satanic buildings. Where people attribute the building to God. And they put pagan satanic stuff with it. And it's all about the money. That's what it is. Right there. I'm going to say something else too here in just a minute. But... Uh, Galatians chapter 2, a problem that you understand if you are genuinely saved. It's a very common problem. Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Another great reason that this thing here is wrong is because false brethren come into these places all the time. All the time they're coming into those places. And you get the guy there, old brother so-and-so, he's doing the offering, he's an usher, and one week and the next week he's gone. And you go, what happened to brother so-and-so? Oh, he left his wife and ran off with some woman half his age. Oh, oh what happened to, you know, uh, assistant pastor so-and-so. Well, uh, we found out that he was stealing money from the offering and, you know, we didn't know about it for a while and, you know, he stepped out on his wife as well and, you know, th these places are just filled with satanic problems all the time. Why? Because this is a great place to go to if you're really involved in some devilment, right? Um, first of all, the spiritual 
thing that goes on there in these churches there, they're filled with devils. So you can really get some good contact with the right spirits if you're an evil person. But secondly, um, it's a good way to, you know, public relations if you're a scumbag. You say, I'm a good church-going person. You say, oh, now, come on. Jeff Dahmer, while he was doing his cannibalism, um, he was a faithful church member, going to different churches and things like that, many times taking his boyfriends with him before he killed them. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, child molester in Pennsylvania. Charlie Roberts, I think the guy's name was. He went and killed a bunch of little girls at an Amish schoolhouse. Faithful church member. And on and on and on and on and on. And we aren't even talking about Catholicism. With Catholicism, you have gangsters. Uh, Kuklinski, Richard Kuklinski, the Iceman, he was a Catholic. Um, all these, you know, Italian mafia guys, whatever else, Catholic, 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 Catholic. Hitler walking out of Catholic churches. Church buildings are, are great centers to go to if you're a, a filthy scumbag. Absolutely. But here's the thing, okay? I said legally. Now, I'm talking spiritual things. I'm talking about spiritually. It's, it's not, you cannot spiritually have, or legally have a spiritual this situation here. Why? Because God says lost people don't get things that are given to saved people. So you can't have saved people and lost people in the same building. It doesn't work in God's system. That's why you never see this thing of inviting lost people to church. That's nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere at all. And yet every church building does it. Okay, so you have the spiritual. But let's talk about the temporal, the legal, the financial aspect of it. Okay? Um, over here at the, you know, that's the wrong marker. This one's going bad. Over here we have King, messed that up, King James Video Ministries, the headquarters. <gasps> okay. One guy with his Bible and my wife, I'll draw her with a dress on because she's a lady, unlike some of the mansters out there. And then here's our son. Okay. Now I can come out with the truth. Now if somebody wants to come in after me and whatever else, well, it's going to be kind of a hard thing to do. I put out videos online and whatever else, and I've never been sued for it, even though I'm very controversial, because it's my right to speak. It's my right to just say what I want to say and, and whatever else. No man forbidding me, like Paul did there in Acts chapter 28. But what do you have when you have... Pastor so-and-so here behind his pulpit. All right. Okay. There he is with his little pulpit in his Bible that he doesn't really believe is God's perfect word. Because if he did, he wouldn't have a church building. But uh, what do you have when you have that? Well, now he is chained to the corporation. Okay, and that's what these things are. All right, and, and even if you have, let's just say you have some guy and he says, well, I'm not 501c3, we're not under government and corporation. There are ways that you can do that, but you see the problem is, if this place is public, then you need to have it zoned for that. You need to have special zoning privileges to be able to allow people to walk in here. See? Here's your steps. But here comes a guy and he's in a wheelchair. Like that. How's he going to get in? Is your church building wheelchair accessible? You have to have wheelchair accessibility. This guy over here, he's walking up the steps like this. He's coming in there, and he's got some good money in his wallet. pastor likes him. He's one of his favorite church members. And this guy, though, you see, he, one of the reasons he wants to give is because he has to write that giving off on his taxes, you see. But that's okay because the church just happens to be a 501c3 government corporation. 
So we can legally give you the proof that you've given this money to the church, you know, for our organizational structure here. And uh, therefore, then you can write it off on your taxes as charitable giving. And uh, that way you're not guilty of tax evasion, fel felony tax evasion. And you see all the legal stuff you get into all of a sudden because you have a public building that represents something that's worth lots and lots and lots of money. Again, I showed it in my video, the independent fundamental Baptist Catholicism stuff. Even small church buildings can cost $500,000. Liberty Baptist Church, I used to go to down in Pennsylvania, million dollar property. I think it was 30, 40 people in regular attendance because they had had so many church splits down through the years. But you get some of these guys, they're running up into the millions, tens of millions of dollars for their church buildings, their corporations. The pastor, when I was going to Liberty Baptist Church, had a $1 million insurance policy put on him. If he said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing or whatever, and somebody tried to sue the church. And uh, I've studied the whole thing of litigation. Peter Kershaw put out some good stuff um, on the whole thing of how to legally make your church un, non 501c3 and, and it's a, officially an unregistered where registered is unregistered figure that one out but there's so much legal stuff that goes on with this again I've studied it I've researched it over the years you have a public building where saved and lost people come to so you're violating the scriptural principles you're not to be yoked together with unbelievers the natural man receiveth not the things of, the God, uh, of God. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. See, you violate the spiritual laws that God established. And you also have to set yourself up with all sorts of different things because you have a public building that's worth millions of dollars. And you have a pastor that can get sued by people because you see, this is a corporation. It's not an individual like me like you if you worship at home. You go out to, in public and whatever else and you hand somebody a gospel tract and they say, I'm an atheist, get out of here. How dare you, whatever else. Hey, we, we saw uh, you putting tracts down in our store. We're going to arrest you. You say, very simple. Uh, let's, okay, let's look at the laws here. Where does, your church, or where does your store say that I'm not allowed to distribute liber literature? And if they say, well, the sign's right over here. You say, well, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. I won't do it again. See, and that's as far as it'll go because the police show up and whatever else and they say, well, you need to have your sign more clearly labeled or sir, please don't do it again. You get a warning because you see you're this. But what if you're representing this? You see, the store owner says, I'm going to go after this guy because he offended me. And then he looks and the, his lawyer looks at, at my, the assets that I own and he says, um, this guy's not worth it. Can't get blood out of a turnip. But what about over here? Ooh, oh, boy, they got some serious money. I, there's an insurance policy on that pastor, pastor for a million dollars. Again, Liberty Baptist Church. The pastor told us, we said, can we go down to the local Walmart in effort of Pennsylvania and, and hand out gospel tracts and lay gospel tracts around and whatever? And he said, no, no, don't do that. He said, we had problems before with that and, you know, we just don't want the problems and whatever. You know why? Because he's the CEO of a corporation. Again, you know, people can get angry at me and whatever else. I am dealing with facts here. Science. You know, demonstrable, provable, testable. That's what I deal in. Okay, there are some things that are spiritual, absolutely, that I will tell you that. I believe in some things that are supernatural. Of course, I'm a, you know, saved believer. But uh, stuff like this, we're dealing with science. Organized religion, you can't make this thing legal and make it match here. You can't do it. It can't be done. And um, it's funny. All of a sudden, the government says, uh, hey, um, you need to close the door. Put a big padlock on it. Closed until further notice. You know? Closed. Due to...
COVID-19. By order of the state. There it is. You know why? Because these are government buildings. Uh, I'll say that one more time. These are government buildings. You see, for the government to give you the license with their official seal on it and whatever else, and here's all the little things and whatever like that, they give you the license, but they get the land with that church on there. That's why a 501c3 church can't just say the people, it can be completely paid off and you can't sell that church building. All you can do is transfer ownership. I've been in the meetings. I've studied the laws. You can't sell your church building if it's under Section 501c3. It is a for-profit corporation. That's what it is. And you think God's for that? And you're going to belittle me and you're going to put me down because I don't have one of these? You see, when it comes right down to it, friends, this is the only stand that a Bible believer can take. This whole mess right here, no. Unscriptural. Can't have anything to do with it. This here? Absolutely. You're right with God if you're doing this. If you're doing this over here, you're not right with God. Plain and simple. So that is going to be it. Again, I'll go over the three things. Three reasons why I will never have a church building. Number one, they're condemned in the Scriptures. Absolutely. The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. You know, He wouldn't say that. He would say, well, you know, there's some things I don't really prefer. The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Don't call that thing a church. If God wanted people to build church buildings, He wouldn't have written that in Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 49, and Acts 17, verses 24 through 25. He would have said, well, I'm, not, I'm just kind of indifferent. I don't really care what you do. Acts chapter 19, pagans are the only people in the entire Bible that refer to buildings as churches. Okay, point number two, people, who were, people would worship me in this church building and not Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 5, verse 38 through 39, all church buildings die with their founder. Remember that. If this work or this council be of men, it will come to naught. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 9, denominations are named after men. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Luther, I'm of West, John Wesley, I'm of this, I'm of that. Yeah. 3 John chapter 1, verse 9 through 10, diatrophies. You can be a diatrophies in here. You can forbid certain people. A lot of these Baptists that are out there, they wouldn't have me in their pulpit if their life depended on it. They wouldn't allow me to walk through the doors of their place. Here on YouTube, I can block people all I want to. They still come in. Doesn't mean anything. If I really wanted to run a, a good cult, if I was really truly a cult leader, I'd get some church building someplace and I have a bunch of, a bunch of big burly thugs, you know, and, and uh, they keep out the bad guys, like a lot of the church buildings do. Number three, it is impossible to legally have a church building, both spiritually and physically, temporally. Okay, and we went through the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 through 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, and Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. You get a church building, it gets infiltrated with false brethren like that. All kinds of problems with them things. They are satanic. Plain and simple. This is the only stand that you can take if you're a Bible-believing Christian. If you really believe the King James Bible and it's your standard in all matters of faith and practice, practice did you say practice yes then you can't be for these buildings they're not an option you have to be anti church building and just say sorry those things uh they have no basis in scripture i'm going to line up with the scriptures i'm going to worship from home I'll meet with other Christians. I'll meet with other saved brethren. I'll, we'll go out to a park someplace or we'll come invite each other over to each other's houses or whatever else. Sure, I'm not a, I have no problem at all with meeting with saved brethren. I love it. It's great. Um, but the weekly little ritual of your little Masonic temple there with your, 
your d different degrees and, and whatever else of, uh, you know, popularity within the church and, and everything. <laughs> no, thank you. If you're in one of those places yet, and uh, this is the first time you've ever heard it condemned from Scripture, um, you better get out. It's just as simple as that. I mean, just going to go way out on them here, okay? Not way out on them because I'm, I believe the Lord is completely for this statement that I'm going to make. If you're still in a church building, you're lost, okay? I mean, with the masks, with the, you know, they shut down when the government told them to shut down. I mean, it, there's no other option at this point in time. I mean, you, your little arguments, well, back in the past, we're not in the past. We're right now, okay? Um, the building's shut down. Okay, they're not of God. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.